Good afternoon. And welcome as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. There, last week I announced that there was the collection for Central and Eastern Europe, and after Mass someone told me I was a week early. So if you didn't give last week, you can still give, or you could give again. Uh, there are baskets at the back of the altar platform for that collection. Also, Sister Kathy, who organized the um, greeting of welcome for the southern border, asked that we might write more cards. Now, I didn't announce this at this Mass, but if by chance you happen to have a greeting card written in Spanish to send to the border, that, <laughs> that's the Holy Spirit. And that, that, little, that little basket would take them. Finally, um, at the end of Mass, I'll be talking about our new COVID protocols. Um, but, and you probably may have seen the sign as you walked in or you picked up the bulletin. But one of the, we may now use our hymnals. So we've returned to the custom of having our hymns posted on the wall and they use the hymnal in your chair, the chair in front of you. We celebrate this feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of God's spirit, spirit of the risen Lord upon all of the people. So we use this water to remind us of our baptism as an opportunity to recommit ourselves to being faithful disciples. Let us begin with this ritual. Good evening, everyone. We'll be singing verses 4, 1, and 2 tonight. There you are, people. Of our sins 
and through the Eucharist that we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in his heavenly kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest. So let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify us, your whole church, and every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, Fill now once more the hearts of believers. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for the Pentecost was filled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to do, proclaim. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under the heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, 
but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in their own language. They were astonished and amazement. They asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elma, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Phamelia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. your spirit and renew from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the same benefit. 
As a body is one through its many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came. He stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise <coughs> 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 Excuse me. Well, 
I've been saying all along that uh, it takes 40 days of Lent to get ready for Easter and 50 days for it to sink in. But hopefully it's sunk in now because we're on our 50th day. <laughs> Celebration of Pentecost. And <clears throat> one of the things that uh, this feast should drive home to us is that it cannot contain the Spirit of God. Spirit of God present in all of creation and all of us will continue to go forth and bear fruit beyond our expectations. So we have to be ready to, to deal with these surprises that God sends us in our church community over the past couple thousand years. And today's a good way, I think, of seeing an example of this. Last week, when we had the Feast of Ascension, Beth opened the scriptures to us and spoke about how the uh, folks were anxious to fill the gap left by Judas. And they decided the best thing was to have another man who had been with them all that time, and that was their criteria. And so they cast lots and elected Matthias to take the place of Judas. But we never hear about Matthias anymore in the scripture. <laughs> we never hear about the 12 anymore in the scripture. It's almost as if those early disciples were just so afraid to look to the future, they would look to the past. And they wanted to rebuild their community based on what they had seen before. 12 people, special relationship with the leader. And uh, it was time to fill that gap and make it work. Well, here we are a week later and we see that uh, God has a different plan. <laughs> He's not sending the Spirit into 12 men. He's sending the Spirit to 120 men and women who have been reflecting on what happened those 50 years, or those 50 days. And they've been amongst themselves debating and figuring out what really is the significance of what happens that we've seen Jesus. And as it presented in the Acts of the Apostles, the first reading today, we see that uh, they are at that point where they, they're ready to uh, allow that spirit to work in them. And so they go out, they're speaking in tongues. Any, any of you ever been to charismatic prayer meeting, you know what that's like. It's a, it's exuberant praise of, of God. And it's not distinguished by something that can be translated as much as it's, a, it's the Spirit of God speaking so that everybody can understand it. And they have this experience of glossolalia, as it's a term used in the scriptures, speaking in tongues. And because of that, these 120 men and women continue to, to move out and, and incorporate and be inclusive and welcoming new people into the community. And it says nothing about being directed by 12 men <laughs> or even by uh, those who thought they had the history on their side. But rather, it's, a, it's an opening to a new experience because the Spirit of God cannot be restricted. I was thinking about this in my own. I've been at this for 48 years, you know. And uh, when I was ordained back in 73, I don't even know this was my first assignment. But back then, there was 212 parishes in the Diocese of Albany. And there were 16 of us ordained that year. And um, we thought we had it all together. <laughs> Well, lo and behold, <laughs> we now have 126 communities rather than 212. And I believe we only had one priest or day last year. There's, I think there's four lined up for this month or next month. And, uh, but 48 years ago, we never had women responsible for a faith community. You know? We never had 
a church, which is where the population of childbearing children in our community now is predominantly Hispanic, Spanish-speaking. We weren't prepared for that. <laughs> Didn't have a clue. <laughs> the uh, schools were built on cheap labor where women and men dedicated to the charism of teaching provided all that needed to be taken care of and they've done an excellent job. Well, we don't have the cheap labor anymore because the sisters finally woke up <laughs> and decided there's other ways to be faithful to our baptismal commitments, not by working for a dollar a day for some priest principal, <laughs> but rather by taking hold of the gifts like Eleanor has to use what God has given her so she can be an instrument of the presence of God in the community as a minister in the community. So these new things are happening, and it's important that uh, we take that seriously, it seems to me. Not look to the past. There are people who love to look to the past, just like the 11 guys did last week. <laughs> they want to look to the past, fill the gap, and let's continue to have it the way it is. Well, it ain't going to be the way it has been, because the Spirit of God cannot be restricted, cannot be contained. And so we need to uh, pay attention to these scriptures. You know? The difference, I think, is that uh, in order to be open to the Spirit, you have to have a little sense of uh, adventure, a little uh, letting go of control, setting aside the ego. And again, when I was ordained, it was a very clerical-dominated church. And in some places, that's still true. But often, when it's, that's the case, things tend to wither and die. As people feel excluded rather than challenged to take on the role of allowing the Spirit to work through all of us. All of us. So, I hope that has sunk in over the past 50 days. <laughs> and I hope we're not afraid of the future by just looking at the past. Let's look to the future. One of the things I had to do when I was probably, I don't know, <clears throat> in my 50s, was to go to Shenandoah High School at night to learn Spanish in order to be able to have enough ability to say Mass in Spanish for the people in the community in that parish where I was at the time. It was a challenge. Can't say I did it well, but I did it. And people appreciated the fact that you make that effort. And I think that should be true for all of us. Don't wait to have it all together. You know, throughout the history of our church and our tradition, God has always worked with flawed personalities, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and we're all a little bit flawed. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we're not capable of continuing the ministry of Jesus in our own space, in our own place, in our own time. So let's take hold of the spirit of Pentecost and let it be an opportunity for us to... Uh, Say yes, yes to the future, yes to the realization that the Spirit of God will continue to surprise us and will continue to challenge us not to live in the past, but to be aware of the present so we can move into the future with confidence that God will not leave us orphans, as it's sometimes been suggested, but that together we will help bring about the kingdom of God. Let us stand now and profess our faith together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Tune to the spirit of the living God, let's place our intentions before the altar. That as a church, we may be open to the diverse manifestations of the spirit and grateful for the multiple gifts offered and shared as we gather at the Eucharistic table. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders at every level will be blessed with the gifts of knowledge, counsel, wisdom, and the courage to do what is right, to be willing to sacrifice power and political gain for justice, peace, and the promotion of the common good. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That people of all faiths might learn about our various traditions and support one another, finding common ground and working together to address the challenges of racism, COVID-19, political discord, and, clim and climate change. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those present and those praying with us at home, blessed with diversity and compassion, may they continue to see the face of God in all. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit will enkindle a flame of hope in the sick and those who care for them. May they be the presence of Jesus for one another, promoting healing of body, mind, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Maria Teresa Zanato, Matthew Grimaldi, and all who have died may rest in the presence of our loving God. And those who mourn their loss be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Trusting that God will provide whatever we need to endure difficult times, we place before the Lord the concerns written in our book of intentions and those yet unspoken. For peace of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you send your spirit into all of us. We might manifest your presence by the way we live our lives. Give us the wisdom and the confidence that you will not abandon us, but give us the strength to do your bidding in our own times. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters, brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us to all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit on those who have made your adopted children by uniting us to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in the profession of one faith. And therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of their glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, in the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dew, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. So do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks. You've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Everett, our Bishop, and all who minister, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray. They were the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse. 
the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon us, your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us may retain all its force, and that the spiritual food that we share may gain us abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Lisa Nolan, who has served our parish as a pastoral care minister for the last few years, will be leaving at the end of June. Lisa will be beginning a chaplaincy internship this fall. Consequently, we have an opening our parish staff for a part-time pastoral care minister. Um, so there, it's about 10 to 15 hours per week. Details are in the bulletin, and please contact me for further information. Uh, and if you know of anyone who might be interested in this ministry, please also invite them to get in touch to learn more. Also, our sac sacristan, Sean O'Neill, will be graduating and going off to the University of Dayton at the end of summer. And so we are also looking to hire a, a new sacristan or a sacristan to complete our roster. We have three others who will still be with us for a few years. This is typically a high school student, so please see Marie or me um, if, if you know of someone who might be interested. So our new COVID protocols, and I know I'll probably forget something, but we're going to be continue to be wearing masks, um, except children who are under two or someone who has a health condition that prevents it from being safe. For people who are not vaccinated, we ask that they continue to see, sit themselves um, within the social distancing parameters. But if you have been vaccinated, um, you can sit closer, but you should decide how close is safe for you. Uh, we're not gonna be checking your vaccination card when you walk in the door. We hope you'll all just figure out what's the right thing for you. Also, you, we're gonna continue to wipe down the chairs for a while because the um, diocese said to maintain our sanitizing protocols and that was one of ours. So if you'd leave your hymnal on your chair after mass, the people who volunteer will know which chairs to wipe down. Um, and we still will need volunteers to wipe down our chairs, our wonderful uh, chair washers. And then finally, or the last thing that I remember, you can go out any door you want. You can go out <laughs> that door, or you can go out that door. So, and you can also come in that door if you want to come in that door. So we, we can come in and out whatever we want. Um, I want to say thank you to Michael Joyce. Uh, we now able to live stream. Many of our community is attending Mass, although some people are still praying with us at home, and we're still... we're grateful that we can, will continue to offer the live stream, but this is Mike Joyce's last Saturday taping, so thank you so much. Um, let's see, birthdays, or, and let's see, Father Leo is celebrating his 65th anniversary of ordination as a priest this week on um, May 26th, so we wish him well. He's on the cover of our bulletin. Are there any other significant events that we should note? No? Well, have a blessed week. <coughs> the Lord be with you. <coughs> and may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. to be your compassion.